In our previous video, we discussed the definition of grief and explored its various forms. Next, we will focus on the five stages of grief model by Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross that will include practical strategies to help you cope better. Renowned psychiatrist Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Rose devoted much of her professional career to caring for terminally ill patients. She engaged in meaningful conversations with them, accompanied them during their final days, and even established a center where they could find solace until the end. Her experiences and observations as a psychiatrist led her to formulate the theory of the five stages of grief. In most cases, her patients seem to progress through these stages of grief in a specific order. However, as research and understanding in the field have advanced, we've learned that these stages are not always linear. People may experience them in different sequence or even concurrently. We've chosen to explore this model because it has been extensively utilized, not only in clinical settings, but also in the business world, and it has undergone significant research. Nevertheless, we must emphasize that this is just one psychological theory of grief. Every individual faces a unique situation, and each loss is distinct. There is no one-size-fits-all approach to grieving, and this model is intended as a guide and a helpful tool. With that in mind, let's delve into each stage of the model. The first stage is denial. This is the classic, this can't be happening feeling that we have all experienced. It's an initial state of shock where we struggle to accept the reality of our loss. It's a normal reaction to overwhelming emotions, a defense mechanism of sorts. Examples of this stage include thoughts like, the doctor must be mistaken, this can't be my diagnosis, or they didn't mean to end the relationship, they'll be back. In this stage, it's common to go through the motions as if on autopilot. Avoidance is also common during denial such as avoiding discussions about the loss or places that remind you of it. To navigate this stage effectively, consider a helpful exercise. Gently bring yourself back to reality, most calmly and safely as possible. This may involve talking to someone who has also been in the grief process, like a healthcare provider or a family member, or sitting in silence in front of a picture, a medical report or a text message. The aim is to gradually face reality and allow the impact of the loss to sink in rather than confronting it abruptly. The second stage of the model is anger. Once you've come to terms with the fact that the loss has occurred, you may find yourself experiencing anger, frustration. This can manifest as being upset with yourself for not taking better care of your body in the case of grieving a medical diagnosis or feeling frustrated thinking that there might have been something you could have done differently to prevent this situation. For example, if your home was burglarized. When navigating the stages of anger, it's important to allow these emotions an outlet. Begin by acknowledging these emotions, perhaps using a tool like the Wheel of Feelings, and then engaging in activities that help release these emotions from your body. Some may find solace in physical activities like yoga or kickboxing, while others may benefit from journaling and expressing their feelings in writing. Remember, the goal is not to eliminate anger, but to traverse this stage with a greater sense of calm. In our next video, we will delve into the remaining three stages, bargaining, depression and acceptance.